things you didn't know about Meghan McCain. Meghan McCain is the daughter of you. S. Send John McCain. Now an outspoken political pundit, Meghan rose to prominence during her dad's failed 2008 presidential bid. She accompanied him on the campaign trail and wrote about her experiences on her now defunct blog, McCain blog it. She became an author, radio host, and Fox News contributor before landing a seat as a co-host on The View. Meghan filled the vacancy left by conservative commentator Jedi Diobila, and she's already making waves. While we wait to see just how much she'll shake up the daytime chat first, let's take a look at some things you didn't know about Meghan McCain. She interned at Saturday Night Live. Meghan graduated from Columbia University in 2007 with a degree in art history, but in 2004 she landed an internship at Saturday Night Live. While tons of young industry hopefuls would have died for an opportunity with the sketch comedy show, Meghan didn't find the experience all that educational or illuminating. In an interview with Playboy, she described her role as being a sort of office slave. She said she served as Lorne Michaels' assistant, which basically meant that she spent most of the day getting coffee and filling up the popcorn bucket. She did happen to be there for Ashley Simpson's infamous lip-syncing debacle, which Meghan claimed resulted in the pieces of Miss Singer kicking in her dressing room door. That was interesting to watch, she remarked, before summing up her experience by saying, I think everybody should have a crappy internship, so they realize what a b asterisk asterisk h it is getting other people's s asterisk asterisk t work done. Yish. Sounds like someone didn't get an invite to any after parties. She started blogging during her dad's presidential bid. Fresh out of college, Meghan joined her dad's 2008 campaign along with two of her fellow Blagettes, photographer Heather Brand and producer Shannon B. Together they created the now defunct McCain Blagette, which captured the lighter side of the campaign, choosing to share behind the scenes moments such as Meghan chilling after a primary win with a cold beer, as well as Meghan's musings on anything from music to makeup to what kind of shoes Henry Kissinger wears. McCain told the Los Angeles Times that she started the blog to help younger voters understand what goes on during a campaign and to strip away the mystery with a behind-the-scenes look at her family and closed press events. It's not a medium to get policy or to sell my candidates issue, she said. I just kind of wanted to show people that the campaign trail is messy. Candidates' children aren't perfect. The Los Angeles Times reported that McCain's blog became a lightning rod for criticism, with political detractors skewering everything from its light tone to how she did, indeed, sometimes use the platform to weigh in on political controversies. For better or worse, the blog catapulted Meghan onto the world stage. Her role during the campaign made her a celebrity. Though she admitted to Playboy that by the day before the election in 2008, she was so spent she almost overdosed on Xanax and that she retreated with some friends to the family cabin in Stina, Aries. To play rock band for days and days and eat and sleep and hang out in bed watching TV, the time she put in paid off. Obviously, not in the sense that it helped her dad win the White House, but as he returned to represent Arizona in the U. S. Senate, his daughter's star continued to rise. In early 2009, she landed a column for the Daily Beast, where her writing began to focus more sharply on politics than it ever had on her blog. Around this time, she also regularly appeared on MSNBC, which eventually led to a full-time gig in 2011, according to Deadline. Like almost every other modern political commentator, Meghan used her burgeoning status as a public figure to start selling books as well. She's a best-selling author. In 2008, Meghan published the children's book, My Dad, John McCain, which made its way onto the New York Times bestsellers list. It's described as a first-person story of her father's Vietnam War experiences, so maybe skip that one at bedtime. 
In 2010, she released Dirty Sexy Politics, a campaign memoir of sorts. In excerpts published by ABC News, Meghan pulled back the curtain on a lot of what she thought went wrong during her dad's unsuccessful bid for the White House. In her opinion, those mistakes included failing to choose either former U.S. Senator Joe Lieberman or former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney as a running mate instead of former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. Her third tome is 2012's America, You Sexy Bitch, a love letter to freedom. It's a collaboration with left-leaning comedian and actor Michael E. and Black, which according to the Los Angeles Times came about because Black got stoned on Ambien one night and tweeted a message to Meghan, we should write a book together. As far as we can tell, it didn't measure up to her first book, but in fairness, what author is able to capture Vietnam War kids book lightning in a bottle twice? She's been body shamed. In an interview with Forbes, Meghan revealed that she had to go to therapy to cope with the very weird reaction people have to her body since she became a public figure. I think people don't understand why I haven't lost a bunch of weight right now, because all women in the media should lose a bunch of weight if they want to go on television and talk about anything, she sarcastically quipped. One of the more notable incidents for which she's unfortunately had to address her body in public. The time she posted a cleavage bearing pic to Twitter, which resulted in her being called a slut, according to us sweetly. Meghan responded by threatening to quit Twitter and penning a column about body acceptance. Conservative media figures later referenced the social media dust up in particularly ugly ways. Right wing blogger Dan Rehal called her Meggie, Big Mac McCain, and callously remarked, This self indulgent set of mega breasts doesn't belong anywhere near a TV studio commenting on anything. He wasn't the only one to pile on. She had a public tiff with Laura Ingraham. After accusing right wing darling Ann Coulter of being offensive, radical, insulting, and confusing all at the same time in one of her Daily Beast columns, Meghan drew the ire of another conservative commentator, Laura Ingraham. According to CNN, Ingraham lashed out at Meghan on her radio show, calling the senator's daughter a valley girl gone awry and a plus sized model. After receiving backlash for those remarks and another retort from Meghan via a Daily Beast column, Ingram doubled down on her attack, writing on her own blog that Meghan is a useful idiot who is merely the flavor of the month in left-wing media land because you are a Republican bashing the gop. It was a pretty ugly exchange for the political landscape at the time, although it admittedly sounds quaint compared the current state of political discourse. Meghan, for her part, at least attempted a high-road approach by once again embracing her body, encouraging others to do the same, and letting this mic drop moment fly. Unfortunately, even though Ingram is more than 20 years older than I and has been a political pundit for longer, almost, than I have been alive, she responded in a form that was embarrassing to herself and to any woman listening to her radio program who was not a size zero. She has tattoos. Though she's certainly not a buttoned-up conservative by any stretch of the imagination, it may surprise some people to know that Meghan's got a little ink. According to GQ, she has a star outline on the top of her right foot, which if you think sounds a lot like a spring break decision, congratulations, you win a pat on the back. She also has a black cross tattoo on her left wrist and had planned to get matching life free or die out with her brother, Jimmy, but my mom wants both of us to stop, she told the New York Times. There was a time when Meghan was seriously considering something a bit more dramatic. McCain wrote in Old English on her lower back. She told GQ she ended up not doing it because of the stigma attached to so-called bullseye tattoos, which you can go ahead and Google on your own. And just a heads up, maybe wait until you leave work for that one. She's extremely close with her dad. You'd be hard pressed to find a fiercer supporter of John McCain than his daughter. 
she has publicly risen to his defense on countless occasions, most notably to rebuke President Trump's infamous I like people who and captured remark that was viewed as a criticism of the senator's time spent as a prisoner of war during the Vietnam War. But their bond is obviously far deeper than political posturing. In a 2009 interview with talk show host Larry King, just as her public persona was starting to form, Meghan said I love my dad so much. He's the best father to me. And like I said, he's so supportive of me and my career and what I do and speaking my mind. In 2013, she expanded on his unconditional support, telling Elle, I've never heard an instance where something I've said publicly has gotten in the way of my relationship with my dad. He gave an interview a year ago where he said, I may not agree with her but I respect her views. That was a really wonderful thing for him to say. I'm really lucky. When Senator McCain went public with his recent cancer diagnosis, it was Meghan who tweeted a statement, which read, in part, my love for my father is boundless, and like any daughter I cannot and do not wish to be in a world without him. He is a warrior at dusk, one of the greatest Americans of our age, and they were the heir to his father's and grandfather's name. But to me he is something more. He is my strength, my example, my refuge, my confidant, my teacher, my hero, my dad. We're not crying, you're crying. She's been critical of Trump. Though she has not shied away from her liberal leanings on social issues, Meghan is still a card-carrying member of the GOP. However, even as it became clear that the Republican Party would likely nominate Donald Trump as its candidate for the 2016 election, Meghan refused to board the Trump train. In March 2016, she wrote in a column for Cosmopolitan, Donald Trump has hijacked my party and turned it into something dark that I do not recognize. Several months later, she had not changed her mind, tweeting, the party I was part of is dead. Even with this all in mind, Meghan did one say of Obama, he's our president and when the election was over and when President Obama won, all negative feelings were gone. I support the president. So you would think that when her party retook the Oval Office in 2016 she would have taken the same approach. This was not the case. Meghan has been critical of Trump's supporters and described the president's alleged mockery of her father's physical ailments as abhorrent. She also referred to Trump's many Twitter hiccups as self-inflicted wounds that are hindering the party's ability to pass its agenda. Now that she stepped away from the conservative-leaning Fox News, it will be interesting to see if she leans in further on her criticisms of Trump. She's a strong advocate for LGBTQ rights. A longtime supporter of gay marriage, Meghan has seemingly tasked herself with dragging the GOP into a more modern acceptance of LGBTQ rights. In 2010, McCain wrote a column for the Daily Beast called Memo to the GOP, Go Gay, in which she argued that reaching out to the gay community is vital to the future success of the party. She also posed for the Nahid campaign protesting California's Proposition 8 amendment, which banned same-sex marriage in the state constitution. Marriage equality is not just a Democrat or Republican issue, it is a human one, Meghan said. She even went so far as to call out fellow Republicans Carl Paladinos and Jim DeMint for making bigoted and homophobic remarks towards the gay community. It is one thing for politicians in this country to come out against marriage equality and it is quite another to say that being gay is somehow brainwashing children, she wrote. Previously a member of the board of directors of Claude Meghan was awarded the Trevor Project Next Gun's first ally award for her support of the LGBTQ community in 2015, reported page 6. In her acceptance remarks, she indicated that while she was proud of the country's progress regarding LGBTQ rights, she knows there's still a long fight ahead. Marriage equality has passed, but people can still get fired for being gay or being trans. That is not American, and that is not the America I believe in.
she didn't get along with the Palians. In 2010, Meghan admitted to ABC News that she had conflicting feelings about Sarah Palin, which was the first time she publicly addressed the alleged friction she had with her father's running mate. Though careful to clarify that she felt Palin brought so much momentum and enthusiasm to the campaign, Meghan previously made waves when she wrote in her book, Dirty Sexy Politics, that her father's VP choice brought drama, stress, complications, panic, and loads of uncertainty to the campaign. It was actually Sarah Palin's daughter, Bristol, who swiped back at Meghan in her own book, Not Afraid of Life, My Journey, So Far. Bristol wrote via ABC News. Every time we saw Meghan, she seemed to be constantly checking us out, comparing my family to hers and complaining. Bristol also took aim at the McCain family's supposedly lavish lifestyle, writing, I've never seen people with so much Louis Vuitton luggage, so many cell phones, and so many constant helpers to do hair and makeup. At the time, Meghan shrugged off Bristol Stiggs by simply tweeting a video that portrayed her family's excitement when the Alaska governor was chosen as a running mate. But about a year later, during her Playboy interview, Meghan let the claws out a little. That girl biffed it fast, totally took off, she said off Bristol, adding, all that stuff she wrote was a total lie. I have, like, one Louis Vuitton purse. She's just young and confused and was thrust into all this. The media aren't kind to her. But once someone signs up for Dancing with the Stars, it's hard to sympathize. Target acquired, target destroyed. Ouch.